السلام عليكم طيب uh, so it's my pleasure uh, good evening everyone my name is Dr. Amani I'm uh, the head of uh, advertisement in the society uh, sorry for the the late uh, of uh, starting the lecture because Zoom had uh, an issue today, so it uh, kicked Safa off, which is uh, she's the responsible to uh, operate it. Anyway, so we welcome uh, Mr. Murad Shahri. He is uh, our speaker today. So we thank you, Mr. Murad, for accepting our invitation to present uh, today a lecture talking about surgical training in anatomy laboratory in, uh, in simulation center part one. So. Uh, Today, this uh, lecture is going to be part one. Part two is going to be presented, inshallah, in some weeks. So uh, just, just to give you a heads up to be excited about uh, the part one and also part two. Uh, Mr. Murad is working in King Fahad Medical City. He is our expert in anatomy lab. Uh, he's doing a very great job in uh, dealing with all the surgical trainees uh, in King Fahad Medical City. So uh, uh, Mr. Murad, the mic is uh, for you. So you can start your presentation. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Welcome everyone and thank you, Doctora, for the introduction. Um, uh, really honored to be here and uh, wish you all have a great um, uh, presentation. Inshallah, enjoy it. Um, first of all, I want to um, uh, know and how many people here uh, are English only and cannot understand Arabic. If you can see, um, you can type in the in the chat. So I can do, don't do this presentation in, uh, uh, in uh, totally in English or totally in Arabic. So, so okay, okay. I see two, three, good. So I will st stick to the English, and if I drift away from Arabic, uh, I will try to uh, maintain the English uh, presentation. Uh, first of all, I'm Murad al-Shahri. I'm an, uh, a human anatomist. I've been uh, uh, working in KMC about now 12 years. Um, uh, one second, let me flip. OK. So I'm currently the manager of the surgical training and anatomical research uh, simulation unit. Uh, it's called uh, STARS for short. And uh, technical uh, technical anatomist at heart, and I'm a faculty member in KFMC Faculty of Medicine. Uh, my uh, bachelor's was in New Zealand, and the master's in the UK. Both of them are major in human anatomy. I have been, I have the pleasure to visit many uh, surgical and anatomy departments around the world. Um, uh, most notably, the one, two, two, two uh, centers here, Dundee, Dundee Institute for Healthcare Simulation. And they had um, uh, fully cadaver, cadaveric uh, laboratories and the Royal College of Surgeons uh, in London. Okay, uh, this presentation will be given a few introduction and how to establish anatomy lab, uh, the challenges we faced, application of anatomy and simulation. And also later on, I'll be discussing uh, the future plans we have in our department. Introduction, um, first of all, it is called STARS, Surgical Training and Anatomical Research and Simulation. Uh, we are uh, centered in the KFMC uh, under the uh, Department of Simulation, known, well known as CRISP. And uh, the, the anatomy lab is basically uh, for training and anatomy 
which is a vital part of simulation, especially for surgeons, because they depend mostly on anatomy. It is a zero risk patient environment. And most of all, the anatomical accuracy is uh, non, uh, is uh, no, nothing like the real human body. So it is zero risk patients. And also, uh, can you hear me? I think the... Yes, well, well, but so. Okay. Okay. And they say in Arabic that some people I've met, uh, they say that anatomy is one half of medicine. So if you uh, study medicine, you'll be focused on anatomy most of the time. And uh, basically, if you go to surgery, and will be much more involved in anatomy. So the aim of our objectives of our, our lab are three to uh, establish a surgical anatomical training lab that uses human cadavers that simulate risk-free patients and utilizing the collective knowledge of the br and brilliance of Saudi experts in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this is uh, an old movie from an Egyptian movie, called this guy saying, in Europe and the advanced countries, they have this and they have that. And uh, I believe that we are, we are on a mission to uh, compete with such advanced uh, countries in um, surgical training and in, in, in the field of anatomy. And we have all the capabilities and um, the, also the staff and the facilities. Hamad Suradi Mithal Jabal Tawaik. And uh, the prince, crown prince, said um, the the will of the Saudi people is just like a, a great mountain in, Nejd, in, in the central areas called Tuaig that is unmovable. If, if, if you can move that mountain, then not, you cannot uh, move that will. So it's a, it's a well uh, known saying from the crown prince that's pushing towards the change and uh, acceleration of advanced in technology and sciences. Um, why did I start in KFMC? First of all, I was, uh, this is my, uh, I've been working here for 12 years. And this is the Faculty of Medicine. If you go to Riyadh, you'll find uh, the most busiest road on, uh, in Riyadh. It's called Kurais Road. And uh, um, it is central, one of the biggest uh, hospitals in uh, Saudi Arabia, I think, and uh, the biggest hospital in the uh, Ministry of Health. So it's a tertiary hospital. It is uh, one of the most valued hospital. Was, uh, it has a lot of talent, so a lot of consultants, surgical consultants, departments, and uh, very specialized uh, uh, department, uh, medical healthcare and medical fields. I was um, greatly supported by uh, either by administration or academics or technical and financially also in this uh, in this uh, establishment. And also we have a plus just established a few years back. Uh, a research center that gives grants and allowed us to expand our uh, uh, our views into uh, the more advanced work. So I get to the question, how to establish an anatomy lab? Uh, this is a part I want everyone to uh, give us a few comments. How do you start an anatomy lab? You can use the chats or the microphone if it's open. How do you start an anatomy lab? A wild guess. Anything you can guess, write it down in the comments, please. RFP.
Okay, so I got first the needs assessment. Cadavers, space, other department needs, and the study curriculum, many cohorts per workflow, proposals, venue, cadavers, technicians, tools, great, and requirement planning. Those are good, very good answers. I uh, plastinated plastic specimen bones. Very good. Most of these question, uh, answers do help us in establishing the lab. I summarized them from my experience in establishing a lab inside the hospital environment into the following. You got space, staff, safety, ethics, and legal. So space will include equipment, will include uh, cadavers, uh, staff, one of the most important ones, and safety, um, infection control, and a lot of things we'll, ex we'll explain more in detail. Ethics and legal are the doorway. And uh, I faced, I think this is the most important part to get a cadavers inside a facility because it's much more harder than you think getting the cadavers and getting rid of them is even harder. So, but um, and ethics, most people have, have um, uh, many people I've met have, uh, there is no written uh, lines for ethics on how to practice your ethics uh, around the cadavers. But today I was, uh, skim it briefly, and we can see in other parts, inshallah. So what type of space we are looking for? This is a laboratory. So it's a medical laboratory, so we'll, we'll have chemicals in it, and we ex uh, expect safety because uh, there's dangers in the laboratory that we don't get in other rooms. And also we treat it just like a mortuary also, or the morgue. So the mortuary or the morgue, we are, um, you see the human bodies are st uh, uh, stacked, identified and kept in cold temperature to avoid decay. And also an operation room, just like an operation room. So you have the doctors and you have the utensils and you have also, uh, the equipments needed for carrying uh, carrying on an operation. So that's was major a major part in surgical training. And it's also mixed with the concept of a classroom. So it's a laboratory and a classroom slash more slash. And we have some things set up like this. This is a, a basic room in our uh, laboratory. Basically, we have um, a lot of uh, things you can see here. Uh, this is laboratory based, but we transformed it into uh, anatomy lab and will serve the surgical training. The space, the space is secure. So you have all your content inside the space and should be secured. Nobody can uh, open and uh, take out without permission. And you have uh, monitor the safety and security of all your specimens and uh, the contents and belongings. And you have like OR uh, machinery inside. Uh, some of them are cost millions or maybe hundred thousands. So you have to keep them in well preserved area. You have also water and drainage. So you have water and drainage. So you have an area where you can rinse, uh, uh, wash your hands, because after touching whatever in the, uh, is in the lab, you'll have the cl a clean sink nearest to the door. And you will be 
washing your hands every time. It is, uh, also, the drainage is important. Sometimes when you drain, if you have don't have a good drain, you will have uh, blockage and you'll have problems in your plumbing. That's why you have to have a good establishment of uh, plumbing. A well-ventilated area. So you have uh, you have like the air conditioning pushing cold air inside the, the lab, and also you need uh, uh, a suction that uh, takes out the ventilation out of, uh, out of this lab, so we are, are um, don't get the same air rotated every time. You also need washable, non-slip floors. So it's like a, a vinyl floors that is washable. If you get blood drops, if you get um, uh, excess body fluid on the floor, you can wipe it off and wash it. And also the design. of the laboratory is uh, important. So we get um, how do you design the laboratory? This was a, one of the basic designs. You have the table and you have like a station. Uh, you can make it as a tray. You can, you can have host uh, as many as possible um, uh, if you have small specimen. But if you have big specimens, we need, we need a larger one. And I always say, always say, start small and think big. And you start small with um, couple of organs or a couple of heads, and then think to have full body cadavers if you are um, uh, capable of hosting this, uh, this uh, sessions. Um, equipment, furniture, uh, as I said, the tables and the chairs. Sometimes the chairs are uh, in the way, so you have to have uh, also good space to store them away from the tables and the pathways of, between tables. And the equipment, this is one of the major, major challenges we faced in the laboratory to uh, provide um, OR grade, uh, when I mean OR, I mean the operation uh, operating room, just like it would be copying the same uh, stuff in, in the operating operation room. So we have uh, uh, good equipment and good uh, functions with this equipment. Finally, we get the audio visuals. So here we have um, a projector and a screen, and we have a, a camera overlay, uh, overhead camera, so you can record what is on the uh, on the tray here. And there is also a computer set up next to it, so you can tell how. <clears throat> So, so sorry. So you can tell, uh, uh, you can present your PowerPoint or videos in between. And you have to have good sound control inside the laboratory so you can uh, present well. Also the tools. So you need uh, to start up, you need a, a refrigerator and a freezer that is washable and uh, could hold uh, human bodies and could hold temperature for a long time. Otherwise, if the temperature is fluctuating, you will get decay faster when the, with the human bodies or the human parts, and you will lose the uh, benefits of, of you getting um, applying your surgical training. Um, one of the basics uh, OR things I've got was uh, a micro dissecting microscope and the suction. Those and a drill, and uh, also a drill that is used for bone and uh, uh, for bone and uh, dissection of bone. And staff, uh, from my experience, you need someone with the science, anatomy, or biology. It has to be like you know, to staff a lab as this. Uh, he might it might be uh, med labs or a nurse. A graduate with a human anatomy, uh, with uh, he likes human anatomy. He or she likes human anatomy. So uh, if you hire someone who doesn't, he won't last long in this area. So he wasn't, he won't be exposed. He'll be exposed to anatomy every day, and 
carrying the uh, cadavers, he wouldn't um, take the role seriously. And he'll be working with cadavers. So many people I've met are afraid to work cadaver or touch them. When I mean cadavers, I mean the human bodies. When it, if you need, if you touch them, if you are afraid to touch them, you're afraid with the blood and bone dust that comes out. Uh, this is not probably not the job uh, the job for you. So you have to have people see the the sessions and see if they are as good for them or not. So they will be trained well on by safety and infection control. So you'll have. Uh, areas where you need disinfection and when you disinfect you need uh, someone do it properly wash the tools and uh, see if there are, there are any rusty and knows how to maintain the utensils and finally lastly first aid trained so he will know how to uh, manage cuts because we're using a lot of uh, blades, a lot of razor, a lot of uh, surgical blades, and it's uh, quite a hazard to touch these kind of blades. Also, a lot of sharp objects, so you need to be aware of. So safety, whenever I'd, I'd like to present, uh, whenever we have a session, we'd like to present about a 15 minute uh, presentation that'll be more interactive and uh, explaining uh, safety. I can, I, I can be, uh, give you a whole lecture about safety and you will take about, most of them will lose interest about safety because this is too much safety. You are like, you know, uh, some of them get too scared to work um, with too much safety instructions. But uh, these safety instructions are well, uh, they're not too scary if you know them well. So lab coats and uh, gloves needed, and they are kept inside the lab. You don't go outside the lab, spreading all the germs you gained inside the lab, and you walk around with it uh, outside the lab. So always keep it. Always keep the uh, the, ger uh, the PPE, which is personal protective equipment. Lab coats and gloves. Always keep them inside the lab. If you need to move them. You can move them inside a, a, a bag and you can move out from the. And there is a hazard from the sharp instruments, as I stated before. There is a port, a sharp forceps, there is a razor blades, uh, sorry, not razor blades, uh, surgical blades that are very, very sharp. And to get rid of them, you have to have a sharp blade. And uh, for us also, as a technicians, Inside the laboratory, we have to watch for when you wash the equipment. You could get stabbed easily while searching between the equipment because somebody forgot to take out the blade from the handle. So it is a, a, a danger for us also as well. There is no open shoes, open top shoes. So if anything fall, uh, sharp falls up on your foot, it will be well protected. At least one layer will be in the way. And this is most importantly, where is a biggest threat to our uh, operation, which is the human tissue parts. We are using human people, real human people. These people have uh, relatives, they have kins. These people actually uh, willed their bodies to be used for science. So we have to respect them. We have to give them a lot of respect. And, uh, many labs we uh, go outside uh, Saudi Arabia we have to have uh, sign multiple papers that said you'll be dealing with this uh, human body you have to respect you have there's our rules you have to be aware of them are you aware of them you sign here and you'll be liable if you uh, you have a lot you have a responsibility if you break those rules Part of the safety is to identify people. You have a, a floor, a map of the floor, and you have to say you are here, and this is uh, you are here, and this is and uh, we are here, and this is where the first aid kit, and this is where the fire equipment are, and also 
familiarize them with these by pointing out and also pointing out the exit. So it's basically just like uh, when you get on, on an airplane and some uh, the flight attendants start waving the, their hands, so says go right, go left, and there's an exit right there. This is a, also a responsibility for us to uh, make all the attendees know where are they needed, uh, what what things do you need, they, do they need, and when you point out where the toilets are, because they don't, you know, when you go outside, then they some of them go left and right, and they lose where the class, and they lose a lot of time trying to get back to class, and uh, you, uh, they complain later on. This is a very uh, uh, confusing uh, uh, building. So you have to know them, you have to show them the way where, where that on the map. Hopefully they will uh, follow up the signs and uh, will be attentive in your lecture uh, about uh, the safety and they will follow it. And also you have to mention about the personal belongings and the trip caution. You have to get, let them know that they have to uh, put the luggage and uh, sorry, the, their baggage over or under, or somewhere where it cannot step on it and and trip. And also, they will be dealing with a lot of wires, you got chairs and wires. <clears throat> so you have to let them know where they put their uh, their foot on the ground to make them put, uh, sure where they put their foot. And also, if you have <clears throat> loose wires, they might trip down and fall, and you will be liable for that error because you have installed the wrong wires and an open place and they will might fall down and hurt themselves and they could uh, uh, sue you for that uh, damage so you are responsible as a uh, as a lab technician and a leader in the laboratory you tell them that this is not the dangers and you should be aware of them and we had we have taken all the measures to make you safe here. So please follow our rules so you'll be in the, uh, in the safe. So <clears throat> in ethics, there's a golden rule that says treat the donors with respect like your own people or real own loved people. Here in Saudi Arabia, we have many uh, few places that we handle human uh, dead human bodies who can mention places like that that you go and see human uh, dead human bodies other than the anatomy lab in the chat please type what you think Which places do you see dead bodies at? Where can you find dead bodies? Anatomy museums, correct? But I've said, like, you know, outside the, the teaching areas. When someone dies, what happens to him in, this, in uh, Saudi Arabia or Muslim country? Graves. Which means a cemetery, yes. Hospital mortuary, yes. Another place in between the grave and the most uh, and the mortuary. Someone Muslims can uh, attest, can say uh, we do this, not the mortuary. After the mortuary, you are you will be carrying the body to a place. They will perform as a group a mosque, a place for washing. Yes. So we call it the uh, washing of dead people in this Maqsalat al Amwat, Maqsalat al Mota. This is the place where. After the morgue, uh, the morgue <clears throat> uh, Muslims 
are treated with uh, respect in this area, they will be covered and will be washed. Um, the washing process is uh, done through um, uh, uh, um, washing the whole body with water and applying perfumes and also uh, relieving the uh, the gas uh, sorry the bowels and the uh, urine from this uh, body and during this time all the body will be covered and there is no will be no showing of uh, skin or uh, uh, forbidden areas of the the deceased so it will be do done from under the towel so I like that there will be a man or a woman that will, so uh, there is a woman a dead woman will be de done by a dead woman if there is a, a dead man will be done by a dead man sorry by a man not a dead man sorry by uh, a male worker and if it's a dead woman will be done by a female worker apologize for that uh, nobody, nobody the dead can actually go, come back um so yes it's okay um uh, there will be applied perfumes on the dead body this is a sign for um, preparing for the uh, for the next journey in the next life and also um, the covering with the white uh, cloth yes camphor which is called camphor in, Engl in english which is uh, a uh, uh, natural plant that smells very nice and it's uh, abundant in the capital and a lot many places um, and also we use uh, musk like uh, musk oils and uh, oud oils so the, uh, the 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 dead will be smelling nice when they enter the mosque after they enter the mosque they are prayed upon they will do a a, a, a funeral prayer so they'll pray, we know the prayer of the, of the dead, and then they'll be driven to the graveyard into the grave. Um, okay, for the Muslims uh, in this, uh, or people who attended the, uh, the graveyards or the burial of people they know, um, have you seen anyone with the following? drinking coffee, eating, or maybe doing a Snapchat. Look, my friend, he's dead. Uh, I will bury him here. God bless his soul. Did, did you anyone see that? No. Did you see anyone smoke or use a, a vape inside the graveyard? Or the mortuary, uh, or the mortuary, or even the uh, wash of the dead, uh, <clears throat> the washing of the dead. These are when he said no. These are the social norms. This is what called the social norms. That it is yes. There's respect. This is how we treat our, our dead, and this is how we should treat other people's dead as sign of respect to the donors. So in, uh, outside uh, other countries like Western countries, they are not supposed to do any of these, um, uh, drinking, eating, photographing uh, randomly, smoking or wear a hat, or some of them like, you know, you should not wear anything on your head unless it's a, a, like a hijab on your head. So like or um, uh, some of the, the Sikh, the Indians, they have like a turban on the head because it's a religion thing, they, they allow it. But this is how different uh, cultures are. So in Saudi Arabia here, we practice these and we shouldn't like, you know, uh, they will, we will, will not find people here joking. Like, you know, saying, okay, look at this guy, he did that and that and start laughing out loud in these areas. These are the social norms here in Saudi Arabia around the dead. These are the basis what we should here uh, apply 
when uh, treating other people, even if they're not Muslim, we, we treat them like that. So that's what the, what the ethics, this, this is the basis of the ethics, and we can uh, add a lot of things to that. Eating and drinking also is a, uh, a source of infection control. I'm pretty sure, <coughs> excuse me, I'm pretty sure you don't want to drink and eat in an anatomy lab while there is a, a surgical drill running and there is bones, dust in the air and everything. Um, you cannot uh, drink after that, believe me, because uh, they all you get bone particles inside your coffee and inside your food if you go in there. Same thing with the mobile phone. If you leave it outside and you start uh, chatting or anything, you'll find some bone dust on your air, even if it's, if it's a well-ventilated lab. Yes, you'll get bone, sauce, bone dust on your, uh, on your, uh, on your equipment. So, added to that, the ethics, this um, cadaver supply comp uh, company will give you agreements and policies. And um, they do monitor social, social media. If they say, okay, Murad al Shahri, he had received an order from, uh, from us, we'll go and follow him on LinkedIn, we'll follow him on Twitter. I've uh, got some uh, actually followers from there. So they will follow me and uh, will watch also my uh, establishment, KFMC, they'll follow it. And see if anyone tweeted a photo of a full face cadaver. And uh, they will we get a problem. There is actually uh, uh, some of them, the companies actually added me on, uh, on uh, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. So there is a solution to that. This. There is an... Uh, if you go through the uh, research pathway, you will be asked to bring in uh, or uh, make an IRB, which is an institutional, institutional review board. So you will submit your plan saying that I will be using human cadavers and I will be using the, uh, this method and I'll apply this, uh, uh, this uh, plan to them. And we will be uh, expecting these results. After that, we will be disposing the, uh, uh, according to the policies and procedures of the establishment. So in Happen Anatomy Lab, we have our own policies and procedures that we follow. So if you say that, you will be bound to apply your policies and procedures of the establishment. And you will get an IRB uh, approval. And there's also another one. Uh, <clears throat> you can ask if you have uh, another pathway. Let's say you made a, a human cadaver course, dissection course, and uh, you get people from uh, outside the establishment. You say it's uh, from another hospital, from another university, and they don't really, uh, they're not familiar with the, with the, with the policies and procedures in this, uh, establishment you work at or institution. So you give them, we made up a quick QR code that sends um, policy and procedures of um, policy and procedures of uh, yeah, that uh, it is uh, like um, an agreement. Uh, I can't remember the name that says. Uh, uh, I hereby agree that uh, I know I've been uh, I've been informed about the uh, safety and uh, ethics of this laboratory, and for my safety and everyone and the establishment, I'll be adhering to the uh, adhering to the uh, to the rules, and I'll be uh, I will be liable and be. Uh, th there's a, uh, I know that will be punishment if I do break the rules to protect ourselves from these uh, uh, legal liabilities. And you, I can press here, agree in your name in email. This will, will waiver their, 
their their, uh, their agreement to you and you have a documentation of that just in case someone decides to break the rules and uh, do something absurd or um, uh, unethical to the cadavers. So this is one of the th most important things to establish lab during establishing the labs. Um, you'll be sent with something, uh, with a, a document with each cadaver. You will be sent a document saying uh, you are liable of this uh, if you uh, do any ethical misconduct and face the legal action and or ban for institute, sometimes for the country if there's a big ethical uh, breach. So we uh, like you get a, um, a country blacklisted if there's a complete uh, successive breaches everywhere. So one of the, the more important thing that uh, is uh, mentioned in the contracts that saying change of custody or venue, meaning that if this cadaver is given to KFMC to Murad al Shehri, should be Murad al Shehri who's responsible for it. And it's a big responsibility, by the way. He'll be liable for any damage or problem happening to that cadaver. Or venue, saying that if you let's say, okay, I want to give this one to uh, Hail or transfer it to Abha, you have to give them a notice that you'll be changing the venue and I'll be responsible for it. Uh, uh, you have to contact them in advance and you get an uh, agreement. And you say, like, it will be in a well kept place. And it's, uh, you have to make sure that you present a very good uh, image about your uh, facility that is uh, adherent to the uh, ethics and uh, of the uh, handling cadavers. Also, the permitted use. So some of them like, you know, I'll, say, uh, I'll do a research and uh, he does uh, an IRB and he gets an approval for ethical to <clears throat> practice a new surgical approach. So let, let's say he wants to uh, do rhinoplasty to change the nose and uh, try to practice uh, plastic surgery. But suddenly he wants to uh, do skin grafts or something like that and uh, uh, give it to patients or something to include it in the medical field. As uh, So he'll be liable for that. I know it's, it doesn't work, but he will be like, you know, someone is cheating. So it was uh, actually doing some, something unethical. And here we can see camera live streaming. I'll get that in, the, in a few slides later. I'll show you an example of a breach of something like that. If you, someone is uh, taking photographs and uh, doing live uh, streaming of dissections without any uh, previous, um, uh, previous uh, approvals from the company, then you'll get uh, liability or you'll be having responsibility for presenting such material. And also precautions, you don't um, cause harm to the cadavers. You don't uh, disrespect them by leaving them outside, <coughs> exposing them to flames, exposing them to dangerous chemicals um, uh, or foul play, like when someone uh, plays with the, the cadaver. Uh, this is in, uh, even in Muslim culture, it is uh, forbidden to do that. And also disposal, you have to be very specific where have these dis uh, disposed of cadavers and the method of disposal, did you cremate or did you bury? Uh, we do in Saudi Arabia for non-Muslims, we do uh, a burial, not a cremation. And it, there is a special uh, graveyard for non-Muslims and they can be buried there ethically and respectfully. And they'll be labeled also if there is Let's just say after five years, someone says, I, okay, I want my uh, uh, father or mother that donated the body back. So you'll have a trace of where this body has been uh, buried. 
and you will be find you'll find the burial grounds and you will dig out the grave everything so this is important with documentation as an anatomist you have to have the documentation of every cadaver you got and once you dispose of them you add this last information document it and keep it in a secure place also you should be uh, this uh, should be not should not uh, allow public viewing. Say, okay, I want to see cadavers. Come, <clears throat> I am. Uh, let's say I am a uh, security guard. I want to see the cadavers. And you go, okay, wait for me. I'll open the door for you, and you'll see it. I said, no, uh, please. This is respectful. Respectfully, this is not for viewing. Public viewing. Unless you are interested in research or interested in, in uh, learning how the body works, this is when you get people to invite them and see the bodies. Some of them are uh, like really interested in seeing the cadavers. I've seen uh, people like this. I say, we want to see the cadavers, we want to see we learn. And once I open the lab, they start to be afraid and go back uh, and, uh, and do not enter the lab. So they talk, talk, but do not, do not walk the walk. Security is an important thing. So you have to have the lab secured. No, uh, the access should be monitored. And there was a breach of a case here of security and people started going around without authorization and caused uh, public, uh, caused actually an issue, legal and illegal, illegal action was, was taken to these uh, keepers of the cadavers. Final two points is to keep the, all tissue together. So you if you have a body from person A, <clears throat> you have it on the same uh, table with a person uh, or the cadaver A, cadaver B, have them on the same table. You wouldn't do that. You have to have them in separate tables and you have keep their uh, um, excess tissue or uh, bones, skin, fat, all in the same place. So yeah, when you put A back, cadaver A, you put all the, the waste tissue with the cadaver inside. That's one of the, uh, this is the most ethical parts that we have faced and we practice here inside in the, our laboratories. Uh, we have some challenges we faced, uh, ma mainly a lot of um, safety and ethics culture adherence. We get a lot of people walking in with a coffee and saying that um, we want to uh, drink coffee and while doing the sections. And uh, this one breaks <clears throat> two rules, rules of safety and ethics. They are exposed to um, infections and swallowing uh, or eating uh, bone dust or uh, bloods or, uh, from the cadavers and also ethics. The culture of uh, the ethics is important. So we have, um, let's say someone took a photo and someone was in the photo drinking coffee. Uh, that is and published that there's two breaches here. Someone's taking photos and someone is taking coffee in the lab. And that is a breach for you. And uh, if they breach and they, you get um, um, uh, like, you know, the, your institute will be uh, legally pursued. That's why writing policies and procedures should be done uh, uh, beforehand and applying them. Nobody can do a uh, step in the lab unless they know the safety and legal issues before they go in the lab and uh, disrespecting the areas or, or uh, uh, harming themselves. And also the infrastructure problems we faced. Uh, some of them uh, were electrical areas, uh, like when we get a lot of electrical wires, wires going around, so we have to shift the labs. Uh, and also surgical equipment, and uh, finally, an atmosphere recognition. Ethical adherence is one, one of the news, recent news, 
wife was shocked to learn husband cadaver dissected at pay-per-view event. So it was, it was live at TV and her husband was uh, donated his body to science and did not opt as uh, uh, free to use photography on him. So his, her, her husband is now on video, uh, exposed and uh, dissected. You can see the guts inside. Uh, they might have uh, removed the clothings or the coverings of him and showed the uh, areas, private areas. This is a, a very big news. This is what happens. It's a bit big news. And Arabic. Uh, you see, Jabal Eid means he br uh, brought Christmas early. It's just uh, like the same. So uh, he's uh, who did that actually got a uh, topsy event, lost the doctor's license for misconduct. We could be facing the same legal issues. We get uh, international uh, suits, uh, sorry, uh, cases, uh, legal cases, and uh, we get. Uh, a lot of uh, expenses in legal defense and legal, and we are uh, we don't really need that. So just adhere to the ethics and follow uh, follow the procedures. And also, um, uh, people are always watching the anatomist, always saying that the anatomy is, uh, anatomy labs are using the poor or uh, without their consent, or the, the, the people, or the little knowledge of the, what happens to them. Uh, excuse me a moment. So this is a guy in, uh, in Texas, cadavers of the poor. So that we are being monitored readily because this is a very, very sensitive subject about um, who, who's uh, the body who's there and they are practicing uh, dissection on it and also surgical training. Are they really used for science or somebody else is making fun of them or making uh, profit out of them? This is a, a very gray area that people here are uh, afraid of. So, uh, second one is, a uh, well-known um, uh, uh, case is the plastination. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of um, gray area in this. In the, uh, if you've seen these plastination, I'm, I'm not sure if anyone here um, knows about plastination. It's basically preserving the human body after dissection in plastic. So we, we change all the water content inside the body with plastic. This a new mummification, uh, they call it a new mummification uh, method, could keep the, the body a thousand of uh, years without any refrigeration and should be in the same position as this one for thousands of years. And the consent, like, you know, the people, um, uh, they say, okay, I won't be used in science, but they don't know how uh, they are dissected and how the plants are. So there is a lot of um, uh, problems. Also here, there's a, a company accused of using Chinese criminal criminals. So there is a lot of uh, issues in, the, in these cadavers handling. In Saudi Arabia, there was a case. Some uh, contractor was allowed into a, a certain uh, dissection room and started uh, dancing and uh, uh, recording it on Snapchat. So the Prince of uh, Makkah province asked to capture them and uh, make an investigation with uh, the people who are uh, responsible. So there is a liability for us there. Yeah, we are, uh, uh, we are responsible for hosting these bodies and we are looked up on to see, to um, uh, make sure that we practice ethically and safely of these cadavers. During our laboratory sessions, 
one of the doctors thought it was uh, very, he was very proud of his work. Then he uh, actually took a photo of a uh, cadaver showing the face and published it on, on social media. So I had to follow him down, track him down, please doctor, you have violated this ethic code. You are, we are liable if you do uh, uh, post the photo, please take it down. And he take it, took it down within minutes. So you have to uh, be careful and uh, what is happening in uh, during your workshops. Are somebody, did somebody sneak a phone in there and took a photo? If, if they did, uh, are they, did they sign uh, the, the liability? So this is what uh, we are uh, aware of. And this is what, what we are supposed to do as anatomists in the laboratory. We have to be careful. This is a very sensitive subject. We're sourcing the cadavers. A lot of people will, uh, a lot of companies will refuse to sell you any cadaver or uh, lease you any cadavers if you practice malpractice with these ethics. Therefore, we have to write policies and procedures. You can start by asking another other anatomy labs what they do, what they, uh, how they handle the corpses, the cadavers, and then identify stakeholders from importing cadavers from the origin till the final removal to burial. So this is a very important part. Also, you have to be aware how much work this is before you even start the lab. And you can uh, definitely uh, ask, and it will be pointed the right direction, and the, you know, most of the work will be very easy to you to write. If you seek consultation, we uh, over, uh, our center, we can offer you a consultation if you need it. So another challenge we faced is financials. So most of the financial finance we got are from research grants. We got uh, fundings for uh, getting the cadavers and we got the cadavers and we are, are able to use them for research and surgical training as well. And companies also are kind enough to uh, help us um, uh, support us financially for demonstrations of their tools, of their equipment and they provide training on their equipment if they need it. So there was a uh, few companies that were few, uh, like helped us with few uh, sessions and they, uh, they were uh, research based. So they helped in uh, bringing the demonstration tool uh, equipment and uh, gear and we are uh, very successful to create this, uh, <clears throat> this uh, session. And uh, another one is surgical equipment. So uh, we are lucky here in KFMC, actually, we got the support of our uh, administration and the whole hospital. We got the OR connection and they see if there's obsolete or uh, re-innovated ORs that have uh, old machinery, but does work, but it's, uh, should be retired, will be sent to us. Also, utensils, the retired uh, the utensils that are not uh, well enough to use on uh, patients. We can they send them, they fix them, and they have like a, a shelf life, uh, and then they will be disposed of. Other, we have, if they're still usable, we can bring them in the lab and actually use them for anatomy. This is uh, one of the things we got to furnish our labs. We have to be smart at, uh, at uh, creating uh, uh, what we have. And there's a lot of opportunities if you keep your eyes and ears open. Finally, there is the anatomist recognition. Anatomy is almost exclusive for medical colleges in Saudi Arabia. It's almost. There's a few co um, colleges and, uh, sorry, uh, universities that do have uh, anatomy labs and surgical training labs, but there's still not enough for us to compete with the Western world or the outside country. 
Also, the anatomist might not be classified as surgical training support yet. We are still new to this area. We are still trying to help in this area. As anatomists, we are uh, always uh, seeking, uh, letting their hands out, raising awareness that we are here help, to help you surgeons. And we also, this is the first thing we'll go to. Go find surgeries where the, uh, the operation room say, hey, I'm an anatomist. Let's work together. And they will come to you and you will be able to start your um, uh, surgical training right away. Final, uh, one of the uh, final points is the application of anatomy and simulation. We have done a lot of work to establish the lab. We have a lot of, done a lot of preparation work, um, writing policies and procedures and getting the space and equipment. Now we get how to use them in simulation. So we are uh, mostly mimicking a real life uh, issue. So we do the anatomy revisions. When you dissect a body or review the anatomy, uh, the review an, uh, an organ or something, you'll see something that is real, that is from a human, that is, has uh, accurate anatomy. You will go in there and find it uh, accurate. And we see you'll learn, appreciate the layers, the arrangements between organs. That is one of the most highly um, uh, truest forms of uh, simulation, in my opinion. So dissection for a surgeon will be a surgical plan later on. So, okay, everybody knows that we can open YouTube and watch some surgeries. Okay, but for a surgeon, he will go and step by step through the skin, through the fascia, through uh, the, the bone, through the nerves, arteries. He will be aware of his surgical plan and approach what to not to cut by mistake. This is a simulation part also. And we had the pleasure of one of the most brightest uh, ENT uh, doctors in uh, came Fad Medical City that uh, devised um, a simulation model on cadavers. Um, I must warn you now, if you are uh, afraid to watch a photo of a cadaver, please look away and uh, listen to my voice and I'll explain what is happening. In one, two, three, Dr. Abdelaziz al Ghattani has made a, a research titled here Cerebrospinal Fluid Leaks Operation uh, Simulation Model of uh, Face Content and Constructs Validation. He basically made, uh, as you can see here in this photo, we are um, very careful not to show any facial features for identification. So uh, we don't. If there is a scar on the face, there's a tattoo, or there is a birthmark, we, are, uh, we should cover it and not be uh, shown, not to be identified. This patient would be identified now or later. This research will be published. So we we'll have taken the, uh, the companies and also the IRB support, uh, approval before. If you look at the, uh, for the research paper, you find much more photos. And you can see uh, how they uh, concealed the identity of the cadavers. Basically, he made a hole in the base of the skull, in the sphenoid bone, if you're an anatomist, you know, and made a hole in the uh, meninges. So you get uh, cerebrospinal fluid leakage. To mimic this area, this because uh, we get the uh, CSF will be clear, watery uh, fluid. He added fluorescein, uh, a fluorescent dye that is goes very br bright yellow, and he added it through a Foley's catheter, a catheter through the spinal column into the uh, cerebrospinal uh, uh, subarachnoid space. So it'll be circulating around his brain. Basically, to be, uh, if you want to go see that paper and online, you can go, I'll send you a link. 
but basically he had the fluorescein pumped inside this bluish area. Yeah, so you'll have uh, this blue will be filled with uh, this yellowish uh, area, and he would make an uh, would break the bone here and make an incision to make a leak. So it's a challenge for uh, it's a challenge for the upcoming doctors to repair this uh, leak and use their surgical skills to block this leakage and block the leakage of the cerebrospinal fluid. Once they are confident, they have uh, shut, uh, shut it down, they will be tested to see if it's waterproof or not by flushing more fluorescein into the CSF area and waiting to see yellowish water coming out or not. If they're successful, they will be, be waterproof and there will be no more yellow uh, uh, liquid coming out. This is one of the most, uh, I'm really proud to work with them and uh, was one of my first uh, uh, time working with the, these cadavers and it was really, really uh, appreciated. Uh, we have even more interesting people coming and more brilliant people coming. They are very innovative in creating new research, new surgical methods. And we are uh, always shocked to see how many people are coming up with new ideas that is research. And they always can uh, train other to increase proficiency of the Saudi surgeons. So on my last point, is for future plans. We'll be involved in transitional medicine. That means we get a surgeon that has an, a research idea, will come into the, our surgical lab, lab and does research. And he'll be coming up with innovative medical procedures that will come surgical treatment or clinical trials and they, are, uh, they can practice it here and gain, uh, become uh, uh, the future of treatment. They might be creating some um, new surgical uh, treatments uh, to, for uh, everybody to, in the world uh, to uh, apply for certain diseases, for certain, this is what will be happening in our lab, hopefully. And we have all this loop completed, so we got, research grants and funds from the research center and the IRB and also um, the, the laboratory to practice and do the science, test the science behind it, try to get, um, uh, get it approved again through research to be applied in clinical trials. I think um, uh, surgeons have uh, to reach a, search, a certain level of uh, expertise uh, I think more than 10 years of being a consultant to be uh, able to uh, practice new research or clinical trials on patients. So this is what happens. We call it the transitional medicine is to take science from the lab and apply it into the uh, bedside treatments uh, and surgeries. This is my presentation. I thank you very much uh, and I hope you, uh, all of you enjoyed it. I hope it wasn't a really heavy presentation. And um, is a QR code. If you want to contact me here, you can screenshot it uh, or uh, uh, follow the link. It is, it's in there. And uh, I'm really glad to hear from you. And thank you for coming. Now we'll open the door uh, for questions. There's a Q&A. I got two. Thank you, Mr. Murad. You have two questions. So the first one regarding the safety protocols. If there is any recognized protocol for safety guidelines, which must be applied when uh, when anatomy lab is established. Is there a safety protocol? Is there recognized protocols or safety guidelines? Um, there is. There is a basically you have to have uh, 
be aware of um, uh, um, what happens in uh, remember my one of my slides uh, there was how what is this uh, this lab is what, what is this uh, anatomy lab what is it it is a mixture between the OR and the classroom and um, uh, and the mort mort mortuary so when you you uh, if you if you if you want to write protocols or find protocols, you have to find it in all of these uh, four areas and combine it. There is um, I've, I've written some of them. I'll publish them later on, and hopefully, uh, if you need them, uh, will co uh, consult me and uh, uh, I will send you uh, your your uh, answers. Um, second one. As asking about CME hours. Second one, uh, anybody who attends in this or initially with the link and uh, attend the lecture where the CME hours will be sent from the study town. It takes almost a week to or two for the study council to see like uh, the attendees and then uh, after that. After, after they uh, and uh, just uh, uh, combine it with the uh, submit uh, then uh, they will submit it to you. Another question: Can the anatomy lab certified by a recognized institution? Uh, I think yes. I think yes. I haven't been followed uh, followed the recognition yet because I'm still uh, establishing the, the the lab. But uh, yes, I think in the future I will be seeking recognition uh, by a uh, respectable organization. Yes. All the organization outside case, right? Sorry. All the organization is outside case. Yes. So we got. A lot of uh, laboratories um, recognition. Uh, there's, I think, Sabahi, and there's uh, um, the, the, the Canadian one, the pathology is the CAP, I think. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, standards to be uh, holding, but uh, we're getting there. Uh, does the stars do collaboration with other anatomy labs? Yes. We are open to do any uh, collaborations, and we have a uh, few plans. Uh, actually, today we have uh, we'll be um, doing uh, collaborations with other places. Yes, Ansari. Uh, still not published yet, but we'll be we'll be able to share it later on. First, we have to seek um, publishing first, but then we will uh, share it. Inshallah, most likely will be uh, shared as a paper. I think. Um, A community we have the we have the Saudi uh, anatomy and uh, physiology uh, community I think we can uh, I can help you as a service yes uh, for consultations you can contact me on my contacts and we'll be happy to help you with uh, and uh, I got also the sourcing for the cadavers I got a Question about the welcome, welcome. Um, I got the uh, question about how do you source them? There is a multiple sources, and um, 
also we have to be aware of their requirements and their uh, uh, prices and everything so um, there is a lot of uh, There's a lot of uh, companies out there, but there's um, ones that uh, offer good uh, solutions. Some of them bring, uh, we use uh, Fresh Frozen, and we use uh, also uh, Plastinated, but Plastinated will not help you as much for surgical training. It will help you, guide you through anatomy, help surgeons revise anat basic anatomy, but it's fixed, it is not, uh, something you can uh, uh, handle. So with cadaver companies, uh, you can get them sourced from other companies. You can ask me later on, I'll send you to the right direction. And uh, university ones, I think, uh, yes. Oh, I think it's meant to the collaboration between other institutions and universities. Yes, we can uh, we can co collaborate. Yes, definitely. And there is a question regarding disposable cadaver, animal cadaver, or okay, uh, yes, disposal of cadavers uh, is, is a difficult and long process, and you have to have uh, uh, you have to have uh, patience with it, and you have to have be ready in uh, like you know certain time and date. We have to have. Uh, um, uh, 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 transportation for it, which is basically used at this, uh, this, uh, the 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 was called the the hearse or the like you know the transportation for we usually have like an ambulances that transfer dead bodies, so we'll be transferring the, the same uh, with Muslims with non-Muslims, so you have to have book them and ask them to transfer the dead body to the disposal areas. And we have in Riyadh, we have uh, the center of uh, forensic uh, medicine and, uh, in the uh, Shumasi hospital, King, King, uh, uh, King Saud or uh, Shumasi? Uh, King Saud, uh, King Saud University. Yeah, King Saud Medical City, which is in Shumasi district. They are the responsible for the, uh, the the handling, and you have to have talked first with the uh, municipality of which is the Baladia, Shoni Baladia, Riyadh, Shoni Baladia. Sorry. King Saud Medical City. Anyway, okay. Uh, King Saud, uh, King Saud uh, Medical City, which is in Shumasi district, and uh, you have to have uh, prior. Uh, uh, prior arrangement with them. And also you have to have uh, prior arrangement with the uh, municipality of Riyadh, so you have to burial of... Uh, and for animal cadavers, um, animals is much easier than human. And uh, basically you can treat them as uh, uh, like, you know, uh, trash, or like you know, like rotten meat, something like that. You can treat in that area, uh, but you have to have like you know, um, also ethics with animals is much harder than human cadavers. So like you know, if you source your uh, animals through torture or something, uh, it is not acceptable to practice that area. So there's a there is a branch of. Um, a branch of uh, wet labs that handle our surgical training on uh, animal cadavers, but animal cadavers is much easier to handle in labs, but we have to have them separate rather than uh, uh, all together in the same lab or the same refrigerator or the same area because it's uh, uh, ethically not right to store them in the same place. I think you already answered what is the disposable procedure. Sorry, again, Doctora? What is the dispose, disposal procedure? It's a very long process. You have to well, be well uh, uh, <clears throat> trained. 
well, well prepared for it. It's a long process, but it's not uh, it's not difficult. But it is a long process. You have to have agreements between you and uh, the local authorities, and uh, uh, it is a, 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 a good question actually. This is a long process, but this is uh, used to be um, used to be uh, only. Uh, done for uh, for laboratories only. Most welcome, Dr. Wright. Thank you for attending. And uh, it, yeah, it used to be. Sorry again. I'm saying this is the last question. Disposal procedures. Mm -hmm. Yes, it used to be um, uh, only for. Uh, um, for universities and also there's companies who done uh, cadaver training so they, they will bring the cadavers with them and they will be equipment with them and they will they will not necessarily anatomists but they are like more salesmen and they will do uh, anatomy labs and they will not be serving the same level as an anatomy lab i would guess but to have uh, someone in the, like in an established well established area with this capabilities and this understanding and uh, uh, the mindset behind it, it is very important to save yourself from a lot of um, uh, problems, uh, legal or ethical. Um, we are uh, definitely not, do not want that. I think with this, we can conclude. Thank you, Mr. Murad, for your great presentation. Uh, it was very informative for everyone, including myself. Uh, we learned a lot uh, from uh, the first part.